What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. It's busy. This week is gonna be busy. It's been a while since I posted a video, but we got a lot of videos coming to you right now. I got somebody's arcade that we have to fix down there. We got Rick's RK one up and we are also done with the game case that's going out to Sims. But on this episode, we're talking about Rick's RK one up. This one's kind of unique. The first one ever to get wireless Super Nintendo controllers. All right guys, so we got another RK one up build. Um, this one's going out to Rick. Rick, I believe, messaged me on Let Go. He found me on Let Go. Sent him a message. I do have an RK one up. I usually always have one on hand. I was originally gonna sell this one as is because I was already doing like another two RK one up builds. But basically, he called me, he got me. And this RK one up is actually a little bit unique. I'm actually gonna talk today about what I noticed. We're gonna talk about Rick's RK one up build, obviously, but we're gonna talk about some unique things that I found about this specific RK one up. I mean, I've been mining these things for ever since they came out, so I don't know, I figured the last two or three months, four months, maybe more. But this one, this was a little bit unique. Now the backstory to this specific RK one up, I had a customer um, that's actually buying a bar top from me. Uh, he came in, he, want, he messaged me, he goes, Vic, I want an RK one up, but then I also talked him into getting a bar top. I believe the guy's name was Morrison or Morris. I always don't really use real names, but Morris was the customer. Um, so I had an RK one up built, but it was a two player version on a Pi 2. So his idea was that he had an RK one up. He was gonna drop off his RK one up and he was gonna take my RK one up, which I already had built. And it was a two player running a Raspberry Pi 2 on it, which I personally loved that build better than the Pi 3. Yes, this one has a little bit more games, but my Pi 2 is really set for like two player games. Now with this Pi 3, this is really mostly focused on my NES, mini NES killer four player version. So with this, I mean, with the Pi 3, it is a little bit faster, I will give you that, but there's still N64 issues, which I'm gonna be making a lot of video guys. When I tell you a lot of videos, you're gonna get like back to back to back videos, a lot of videos because we finished the game case. I gotta modify somebody's uh, beat up arcade cabinet. There's a lot of stuff going on. I know you guys aren't a fan of the selfie mode, but on this one, I'm gonna be doing a selfie mode because I'm just, my mind's going crazy because there's so many videos I have to make. And well, you guys, I hope, miss me, but we're back on schedule. We're doing everything, works, and my work schedule and everything's back to normal. But real quick again, we're gonna to touch up on the RK one up. I'm gonna go on selfie mode and I'll turn this camera around. But what's very unique about this is that when Mars dropped me off this one, off the bat, the color on the marquee was, was different than the one I gave him. So I think I had the first, like whatever you wanna call it, like the earlier version of the RK one up. But this one's a little bit unique. I've never seen this before, but it looks like RK one up actually used actual T molding, not like the tape that they used to use. This cabinet is actually using real T molding. I'm gonna take the control panel off real quick and I'm gonna show you exactly how I discovered that. As I take the control panel off, the other thing I noticed was the screws that they used to hold down the control deck are a lot smaller than what they used to be. So again, stereo mod on this one. I'm doing one handed. I'm gonna take this out real quick. So now real quick, there are a lot of people that, you know, I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial, so you guys could always make this, but I do have a lot of people that always question my control panel, and especially because there is an LED strip around it. But again, I have enough slack on the LED strip to remove this. We do have our wiring. We do have our speaker mode on this one. But real quick, just to show you how I discovered this, check this out. Look at that. If I could focus. Right there, guys, that is a half inch T molding cut. So they actually are using actual T molding, which very much shocked me. Really cool, but if you notice, they did put like a glue. There is a glue on this. So the control deck actually has T molding, and you can also see there's actual T molding involved. I was mind blown when I noticed that. So Again, not only that, you do have also a different color control panel. This definitely is a little bit lighter than the other control panels that I've seen. So, I mean, again, this might be, not be new. I don't care. I discovered it, so I'm making the video. Again, real quick, this is even better to show you. Look at that T-molding slot. Again, looks like half inch. Usually traditional arcade is three quarter inch deep. This one right here is using a half inch. 
so far again this is rick's arcade rick buddy we're almost done i'm pretty sure it'll give me like another two days basically all i'm waiting for now everything's set all i'm waiting for is the inserts um i do want to try something different we are going to make a sticker insert instead of my normal paper one but again rick's arcade we got our four player admins right here we got our audio controller here the big thing about Rick's Arcade is that he's going to be the first one to get these wireless SNES controllers. If you guys take a look at my uh, recent, um, I did the mini, uh, the mini NES Killer four-player mod. This is the first time ever using wireless controllers. These are on Amazon. I think they're about like 25 to 30 bucks for the pair for two of them. The reviews on Amazon are not that great. Um, I don't really know why, but these are actually for also um the mini nes the super nes so it's a double whammy um somebody saw it he liked it they do feel good um you get the controller port again totally wireless to start them up you press the start button and now we have player three on this easy stuff again on my pi builds player one is the only one that could work with the menu um, real quick, let's load up a four player game and let's show you what this looks like. So now again guys, I'm gonna be doing a big video um, basically comparing the Pi to an actual laptop based game system um, such as Hyperspin, that's what I usually use. But real quick, just to show you guys, again, I got my control panel down. We have our speaker mod on this. We're gonna load up MAM. Ma I call it MAM, somebody messaged me, it's not MAM, it's MAME. Call it whatever you want, I call it MAM Arcades. And again, there's a lot of arcade games that will do four players such as uh, Sunset Riders and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I always do Simpsons. We're gonna load up the Simpsons. Again, remember, we got players one and two right here. And on our controller, I actually, with a marker, I will mark what's player four, what's player three. We're gonna let it boot up. Again, this is always set to players one and two on this. So, coin one. Marge, coin two. Bart, uh, Homer, this one is coin three. That's off. This one is coin three. Make sure our controller turns on. We got four players going on right now. Four player, this has 30 feet. You could be playing 30 feet in the back of this. Stereo mod on this one, totally up. I'm gonna do this real quick with these. There we go. This is tag team now. Again, four players, it works. Again, we have our admin button set. Our admin buttons are set to shift, hotkey shift out. I could save this state right here. I could get beat up a little bit and I could reload my state. That's what I love about this thing. I love my save states and my load states. Again, it has everything. I mean, it has, you know, 2,200 MAME arcades, MAM arcades, I call it MAM. Um, you just gotta think about what game was a three player game or a four player game. So for example, the most common one is Sunset Riders. So if I go to S, I have it set up to alphabetical order so I could jump to the letters. So Sunset Riders, we're gonna- Sunset Riders. You're over there. Sunset Riders is a four player game. Again, after about 30 seconds, if you don't use the controllers, they do turn off. All you gotta do is press the start button and it'll boot up. We're gonna let this boot up right now. MAME arcades, I'm gonna, I say MAM. I keep saying MAME now. MAME arcades will always notice the four controllers. Really, RetroArc always notices the four controllers. Let's load up the base. Player one, player two, player four, and player three. Again, these controllers right here are always. Amazing, it's amazing. These will always be set forever for players three and four. So now that we got that whole thing set up though, I mean, this is, I don't know, I, I literally just sat here for like 30 minutes trying to figure this out, but it's kind of weird how uh, the re iCast works. Um, I have it set to the Zinmo, but because I have these connected, um, it won't recognize the Zinmo, it actually recognizes these first. So I'm gonna show you real quick. For example, I could use this, but I can't use the other controllers. So this right now is gonna be using the SNES controllers. Again, we did the ABXYLR, no Z button on this. Um, 
That exit emulator though is connected to the Zen mode. That's what's very confusing. So as you can see, I can press start on this, but I can't, I can't use this. So that's our Pi, uh, that's our recast for the Dreamcast works. But again, it recognizes my exit button for the, the Zen mode, very odd. So now real quick guys, something I wanna go over because I didn't go over it ever in the videos because I never noticed it. Again, people buy these things and sometimes even they help me. Some people tell me some little things that they see that that might happen. So I never really went over this, but I'm gonna talk real quick about the admin keys and the hot shift key. Really the hot key as to say, which I call it the shift key. So I'm gonna load up a game real quick. And uh, again, the way I designed this is that really, if you do want a hot, like, you know, let's say you wanna load a game, you shouldn't be touching any other button besides these down here. I'm gonna show you what could happen, basically why I'm making this. But real quick, we're gonna load this up. And I don't think I have a game saved on this. I don't, I don't have a load, any game saved on this. So again, what's really cool about these things is that you could always exit the game and reload it, even if you exit the game, which I'm gonna show you real quick. But just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea of what I mean right now, right? If I was gonna, let's say, load a game, all I really want you guys to do, all you have to do, is you will literally press shift and then your load button, that's it. Somebody told me, Vic, I actually press shift and then like the joystick up and down and all that, and it actually will change a couple of settings. So for example, with me doing that, I just changed the number for the save state. These are all set to save state zero. If you change the number, you could really have multiple save states, which I don't really suggest. The other one is like if you do shift, I think the X button, you'll get the retro arc screen. So just keep that in mind. In reality, when you do shift, you don't really wanna push anything else other than what you need to do at the bottom. If you do get to this kind of screen, I think you could shift again, the middle button out. But also there's a couple of things on the screen that you don't really wanna to touch. I really don't want you to touch. For example, you could change the options and the latency and shaders and you really don't wanna to touch that. That's gonna be a nightmare and a half. If you do wanna like, let's say back out, now you're on a different screen, you're gonna call me, Vic. Here. Worst case scenario, if it ever happens, you get scared, just unplug it. Unplug the system, give it a minute and replug it and you'll be set. You'll always try to stay away from plugging in and replugging it very fast. You don't want to do that just like a computer. Don't plug in, plug out real quick. It's going to be a nightmare if you do it like that. Now again, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to load up. I know for a fact I was playing before the Simpsons. I was playing uh, some, um, here we go. I'll do the Simpsons. So again, I'm going to reload the Simpsons. I'm gonna let it boot up, let it do its thing, and I'm actually gonna load a game, which actually we were playing with our four players when I was shooting this. So, let the system boot up. It's gonna go through the actual arcade boot screen. This is an actual arcade thing that happens. So if you had an actual arcade, like a real Simpsons arcade, you will see the screen. Now, if I go now to load, I'm back to the other game that we were playing before. Again, I'm, this is set to four players, so I was playing a four player game. It will remember it. It's pretty cool. That's why I love that feature. Real quick, we're gonna do the N64 and why I'm gonna make a video pretty soon. Um, you know, again, people in advertisements, you'll see, oh man, this thing will play 16,000 games. Yeah, it will. But you have to keep in mind that this is a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi is not a computer. I don't wanna talk away from the camera, but let me just load up the N64 because I'm pretty sure I passed it. We're gonna load up the N64 Let's load up uh, the best one to start with for four players to test the Mario Kart, just to show you real quick that, yes, this will work with four player Mario Kart, two players on the joysticks and two players on the SNES controllers. Rick, you'll decide where you want the controllers to be. Yeah. Rick, you'll decide where the controllers will go. My last customer, we put uh, tape on it and we kind of taped it to the bottom right next to the logos. Basically, real quick. Again, four player. Player one. Oh, I backed out, sorry. I pressed the back button. You'll have to learn the buttons. Yes, I know it's tough, but this is button A. Mario, button two, player two is my other joystick, Luigi. This right here is labeled player four. I'm gonna be Bowser. And of course, my player three, which is off. Again, you gotta activate it, your peach. This is set, four player, N64 action going on. But again, this is the big thing that I want people to learn and to understand. You could hear it. 
You could literally hear the stutter. See that? So to alleviate that though, Rick, don't be worried. We're gonna fix it though. Basically, what we have to do is that we have to change the emulator, which I'll show you real quick. This isn't supposed to be a tutorial, but I'll show you real quick. But again, there, you will hear stutter. I will change the the biggest thing again. You will hear his stutter. It won't be the, as bad as that. I have to make a little tweak on the inside and the back end of the emulator. But the real reason I'm making this is because people need to understand. Again, see, four, I had to press all four buttons to, to, to exit out of it. The big thing that people understand is that the N64, the control on the N64 had the L, R, A, B, four C buttons, the Z button in the back, the analog stick, and the D-pad. So buttons alone, six, seven, eight, nine. It had nine buttons alone. On one control, is nine buttons. As you can see, you only have six here. Seven and eight if you count the start and the select, but it's not really the same effect. Again, not to mention you do have an analog stick. So keep that in mind. I was trying to play, um, I'm gonna load it up. And this is where I really discovered it. I was trying to play some Tony Hawk. I wanted to play some Tony Hawk. And again, you basically have to configure the buttons in a specific way. In reality, it's A, B up here, and then it's C buttons. I have this configured because it's C buttons. But when I did that, you don't have your L and R buttons now. So. Again, you got to keep that in mind. For you to really enjoy N64, you do need the N64 controllers. I've yet to find wireless N64 controllers. I've tried playing this with a PS3 controller, like a wireless PS3 controller. It's not the same effect. Because you do have your four buttons here, but then I would, uh, I would assign the C buttons to the right analog stick, which I'm going to show you in the hyperspin build. You guys have to keep that in mind. I mean, you know, people sometimes they argue with me or they get upset. The biggest issue that I have with this, with the Pi specifically, is that there is no VRAM, there is no RAM at all, there's no operating system on this thing, so you can't expect amazingness out of a tiny little mini computer. It's not even a mini computer, it fits in the palm of your hand. So, you know, respect that it does have the retro gaming and all the old school stuff, that works. But once you get into the high 3D, like, image graphic games, you can't expect the Pi to work. You just can't. It, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. You have to go into now getting a PC build, hyperspin build, or a launch box kind of build. That's the real thing we're gonna fix right now, the Sega Genesis, uh, the Sega Dreamcast controller config, which we have to go into it. But other than that, Rick, I'm not gonna say it yet, buddy. We're gonna make a whole video and all that, but Rick is gonna be the first one to get wireless controllers. You will see the final video. This right now again is 98%. I wish I could say Vic come. Uh, I wish I could say Rick come pick this thing up, but I'm really just waiting for the inserts. Um, I used to do the paper ones. I'm trying to get away from that because paper ones it would spin. So I did place an order for some actual clear circle stickers. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it looks nicer. And that's the big thing that I want to do is make sure. And we always, I always try to improve each arcade I build. We just wanna make sure that everything looks good and it works great. Uh, and also I always do at least for about a good five, six hours of actual play time, I will always play with my actual arcades just to make sure I unplug, replug, unplug, replug. Just, you know, real situations, real scenarios to make sure that the customer like you guys, you guys don't have any headaches. Trust me, I know other people will build these things. I've seen people sell hyperspin drives and plug and play. There's no such thing as plug and play in this thing. You can't just plug and play. It's, it's very difficult. You have to make sure everything works to the T. So again, this right now is working. I just gotta make one slight mod to my N64 emulator, which maybe I'll do that on a different video or I'll just put it to the end of this. I'm gonna put it to the end of this video just to make it one video. Other than that, that's it. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. I build arcades. Another arcade one-up build in the books.